Hello and welcome to the second season of Yuri Studio. My name is Erica Friedman and I write and I talk about and I think about Yuri a lot. Here on Yuri Studio, I take some time to address questions I get all the time at panels and lectures. Last season started with a bit of Yuri history. The first question I answered was, why are there so many schoolgirls in Yuri? And then we went macro with what makes a story Yuri. The season wrapped up with my favorite video in which I answered a question which is at the heart of Yuri right now. Are there any queer creators making Yuri? That video was an amazing process because even as I worked on it, some folks came out publicly and I scrambled to get them in. Now we're here at season two and we already have some fun stuff lined up. Today, we're gonna to start with a question I get so often at panels and lectures that I wanted to answer it right away. Today, we're looking at the question. Why is there more boys love than Yuri? The question is like all good questions, a little complicated. The TLDR is time, audience, and marketing, but I want to start with a little bit of history. Our story starts 50 years ago in 1971, when the proto-BL manga, Juichi Gatsu Gymnasium, November Gymnasium, was published. I call it proto, because the idea of boys' love, or yaoi, or even juna at that point didn't yet exist, but the idea of boys at a private school falling in love definitely did. Moto Hagio has said in interviews that she considered making the characters girls, but the idea of them kissing felt slimy, and she preferred it to be two boys. So it's 1971, it's the outside edge of the sexual revolution and free love and the advent of birth control and women's lib, and the Year 24 group, who are women who had grown up reading manga, they wanted to make stories that they wanted to read. And they also wanted these stories to express and experience women's sexuality and sensuality. Part of that was to enjoy being titillated by content that didn't put women into an exploited or passive position. BL wasn't consciously queer, but by using same-sex relationships with men, women were able to easily identify with either the aggressor or the passive partner. This was a sexual experience, but wanted to remove that they could share with friends and not be thought of as gay or sexually promiscuous. As it happens, 1971 also saw the publication of Shiroya Heno Fatari, what I consider to be the first Yuri manga. This manga established a lot of tropes that became common to Yuri and, like November Gymnasium, established an exotic locale and an indefinite time period as safe places to put these emotionally intense tales of same-sex attraction. In the late 1970s, Juna magazine premiered, featuring relationships between men that sometimes eerily mirrored the kind of sexual politics women had to deal with, but which also incorporated those exotic locales, exotic professions, and situations. With both a creator base and presumed audience of straight women, what we now call boys love was the hot new trend. BL spent the 1980s on the down low, popular but not quite mainstream. BL went through an evolution as a genre, which I'm going to skip here as this isn't a video about BL, but by the 1990s, yaoi had hit the mainstream. In the years immediately before Sailor's Uranus and Neptune debuted for the very first time on Japanese TV, there were some 30 yaoi manga magazines being published. Yaoi made it over to America in the mid to late 1990s with the help of the internet. In 2020, what we now call boys love, or BL as I'll refer to it from now on, regardless of what period I'm talking about, has a history that goes back nearly 45 years and has been a recognized genre since the 1990s. Yuri has had a completely different history and has only been official genre for about a decade at this point. So our first answer to this question is time. BL is older and more deeply entrenched as a genre. When Yuri is approaching its 50th anniversary mark, I have no doubt we'll be having a different conversation. You may have wondered if both BL and Yuri were born in 1971, why did BL take off and Yuri kind of languish? Well, to be honest, there are a lot more straight women than there are queer women, and straight women tend to be male-focused. BL is a very natural outgrowth of women writing comics for women. In a world that has done as much as possible to deny women's sexuality, it made, and makes, 
perfect sense for women to use men as a cipher for their sexuality and for their own desires, just as men have always done with women. Thematically, by using men, women could give their desire more freedom and privilege while at the same time keeping themselves away from sex pests who perceive women as prey. So the second part of the answer is audience. I said there are a lot more straight women than there are queer women and the audience for BL is presumed to be straight women. That doesn't mean the audience was all straight women though. Lesbian content was something for men, but as straight women were discovering they found same-sex relationships attractive as long as it portrayed young men with long hair and feminine features and girlish longing. And yes, I'm being a teeny little starky here. Lesbians had found a perfect beard for their own desires. This isn't all that uncommon, by the way. Queer women write books about gay men and have done for a very long time in a kind of exploration. The one that popped into my mind immediately, even as I was writing this, is Marguerite Yorsenar's book about Hadrian as lover, Antinous. She was bisexual, living with her longtime lover Grace Frick when she wrote The Memoirs of Hadrian. In Japan of the mid-70s and 80s, lesbians were making connections using the Yuri Tsushin sections of magazines like Allen and Gecko, which featured Shonen Ai comics. They were using this new genre as a way to connect to each other. Female fans of these comics who were women who loved women would write letters looking to meet women of like minds and interests, much like the Yurizoka no Heia had given space for women to meet up in gay men's magazines. In the absence of queer work by and for women, we have often sought to make space among queer men and straight women for ourselves. So while BL fandom included and includes queer women and queer men, it was originally by and for straight women. By the 1990s, there were a lot of queer creators creating BL, in part because Yuri didn't exist yet as a genre and where it could be found, like the doujinshi world, was, it was mostly dominated by men creating work by and for themselves. It was a pretty safe space for queer women to explore same-sex attraction with BL, and most importantly, a lot of queer women just really enjoyed it. But the vast majority of both creators and audience in BL have always been straight women. Lastly, it's pretty well known that women buy what they want. Women are the demographic that drive retail sales pretty much all over the world for many reasons. Here was a genre that served their needs and it found a market ready to be served. Companies are in the business of making money. That's obvious. But what that means in this context is the equally obvious fact that when something is more popular, more companies make it. So, by the mid-90s, more companies had jumped on the BL bandwagon, and by the early 2000s, there were BL sections in Japanese manga stores. You can still see these in stores like Anime and Toru no Ana. On the women's manga floors, you can actually see the visual impact of the sections as the book bindings, logos, and trim all turn pink, or sometimes blue, as the company or imprint might choose. But really, there's a lot of pink. Here's an image from the Fatekia blog of the K-Books Dojin Khan in Ikebukuro, and you will note the wash of reddishness. The more BL that was sold, the more that could be made. What was hot became hotter and more available. All of this was true through the 1990s. By the time I wandered into my very first store in Japan in the 2000s, it was instantly obvious to me where the BL manga was, even before I could read a word of Japanese even before I looked at a single cover. And there you have it. It's been around longer, had a homogeneous and underserved audience, which is likely to purchase goods, a couple of decades head start, and a powerful marketing machine, which had unlocked a new source of income, and all means that at this point, there's still more BL than Yuri. But here's the thing. Yuri, which comes from and reaches a more heterogeneous audience, might have an advantage in the long run, Check back with me in 2050 and we'll see if this is still true. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I hope you will subscribe to this channel and subscribe to us on Patreon. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up, so I'll see you again soon on Yuri Studio. Mm -hmm.